Welcome, everybody, to the 30-Day Heart Coherence Challenge. We couldn't be more excited uh, to have you here with us for these next 30 days, where we're going to be going into the heart together. We're going to be learning from some amazing guest speakers, and we're going to just, yeah, have a blast. So, Yeah, so we're so excited that we have Roland McCready with us today. Who's also become our good friend. So yes. welcome, Roland. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you. My my honor and pleasure. And um, I'm actually really excited to support what you guys are doing with the uh, the Heart Challenge in any way I can. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Roland is the head of research at the Heart Math Institute. Yeah. yeah. So we have, we have so much to talk about, but we're going to begin by getting into the heart. Yes. And Roland's agreed to, to guide us there. I would love to. And I know that... Um, through the the challenge and actually at the, the event we're going to talk a little bit about, we'll mm -hmm. be doing a heart um, focused meditation uh, to really get, help get us in a coherent state and really add love and compassion to the, the planetary field environment. Mm -hmm. And that's really to help lift the baseline consciousness of humanity. Because uh, what we feed the field really matters. But if it's okay with you guys, I'd like to maybe introduce a technique that we can practice today and uh, for the, the lock-in. That is something that people can use anytime, anywhere. When you're talking to somebody, you're maybe you're having a uh, a challenging conversation in a meeting, or um, things are kind of going sideways in the family, things like that. Uh, it's called shift and lift. Would, would that be okay? Absolutely. We'd love that. Okay. All right. So this technique is something you can do with your eyes open, and you can do it anywhere, anytime, and nobody even needs to know you're doing it. But for today, when you first learn it, uh, it's okay to go ahead and close your eyes and you can kind of, kind of go in a little bit deeper. So first step, it's called heart-focused breathing. For heart-focused breathing, you focus your attention in the area of the heart. And just imagine that your breath is flowing in and out of your chest or heart area. And you want to breathe a little slower and a little deeper than usual. Equal on the in-breath, equal on the out-breath. And find a rhythm that's easy and comfortable. Just kind of maintain that heart focus breathing. And as you continue with the heart focus breathing... Activate feelings of kindness, appreciation, a genuine connection, or an attitude of deep listening. Just breathe in that feeling of kindness or appreciation. Or if you're in a conversation with someone, that attitude of deep listening. Now, in the, in the next step, we want to radiate those heart qualities to raise your personal vibration and help lift the energy field environment that surrounds you. Just consciously radiate out from the heart, those heart qualities, those feelings of kindness or appreciation, connection with others. And we'll just take another minute or so and just do the heart focused breathing while radiating those heart qualities.
right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So we're so excited for everybody who's new with us. And there's also so many returning people. So the challenge is to do a heart coherence meditation or a heart coherence practice every day for the next 30 days. And then we're also going to have interviews a few times a week with amazing teachers, authors, speakers, people like Roland. And the cool thing that happened sort of just by accident is that we planned to have our challenge from April to May. And then heart math was just by sort of um, a coincidence, although nothing feels like a coincidence. Synchronicity. It's synchronicity. <laughs> uh, it just lined up perfectly that right after that, you're having the Love Unleashed Global Coherence event. So we would love to have you talk about just the details of that and a little bit more of what people will experience there. Sure, be, be happy to. One of my, this is actually my favorite <laughs> event uh, of the year um, that, that we've ever, we ever do. I get to talk about the new science uh, that we've been doing for the previous years. We've been doing these events, uh, I think every year, this is probably our 12th or 13th year, and it's our only um, event really focused on the global coherence work, you know, our work about humanity and the earth, you know, getting in sync and, and helping raise the, the consciousness of of, the, of humanity, basically. It's a, a, an event that helps us raise funds to support that research. Uh, you know, all the proceeds from it, which is not a lot, but it helps support the research and any, any donations that are made during the event. And this year's title, as you said, Leah, Love Unleashed, uh, a new momentum of heart consciousness unfolding. And it's going to be an, in our first back to in-person event. We used to do these in uh, Tulum in Mexico every year in person. Um, then we had to shift, obviously, to um, Zoom base for the last three years. So this, this year, we're getting back together in person. And it's going to be held in Santa Cruz, uh, California, uh, at a beautiful re retreat center. Um, it's going to be, a, be an awesome place. But we're also doing uh, the online or the virtual uh, as well. So it'll be our first ever hybrid uh, okay. event and um so it's a you know, ocean view you know you can see the ocean you also can go in walks in the redwoods where this facility is and it's um may 16th through 19th uh, in santa cruz and it's going to be a, a pretty cool event i think we've got a lot of um speakers that'll be there and in addition to me i'll be unfolding some of the, the new research but uh my good friend greg braden is going to be here in person as well for the yes. whole event and so he'll be doing uh, some exercises and, you know, kind of one of them. Not sort of, we don't, these are, these conferences are different. They're not like just a bunch of talking heads. We really design them from the first day you to the end. Uh, kind of, you can think of a choreography for, for an arc to take us deeper into the, the journey of discovering our own heart uh, from wherever we are, right? And going deeper than that. Uh, and then on the, we're also, Greg and I, being together like this, it's an opportunity on the Saturday afternoon. It's, it's optional, but I think most people want to come. Um, Greg wanted to call it Roland and Greg Unleashed. So we're going to have a long session of just <laughs> Greg and I just take, taking any question that people want to want uh, to ask about anything. Right. Really, uh, after, In addition to the formal talks we'll be doing. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, It'll be a lot so of cool. fun. Uh, to kind of, you know, be a lot of really... Um, uh, personal, well, yeah, a lot of personal, but a lot of just time with the community to, um, mm. rather than just a bunch of people giving speeches and on to the next, we'll have a lot of interaction. Uh, Lynn McTaggart's also going to be one of the speakers. Uh, mm. Jack Canfield. Uh, yeah. so I know you guys, uh, Jack is probably uh, doing one of these interviews. I, I don't sure. know about Lynn. Um, Howard Martin is going to be our MC. He's a kick. He's always so fun. <laughs> yeah. Howard's the best. We love Howard. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the Steve Havel will be kind of mod, uh, moderating the the virtual community, and Nakam uh, Planta is one of our, our researchers will be doing an awesome presentation on the Global Consciousness Project 2.0, as well. Uh, and of course, you guys will be there. You're gonna. Yeah. This is, I think, yeah. a really cool thing. I don't know if everyone in the in the um, uh, community has yet to seen some of our posts and things, but we did an experiment over um, a series of months. Uh, to look at the effect on the global consciousness field with the new GCP2 system and, and uh, where we did a kind of a very similar to what we're doing here, 
uh, a meditation and, and saw it and amazing shift in the field environment from the GCP2 or the Global Consciousness Network data. So we're going to do something in partnership with you guys, right? Uh-huh. Um, the Saturday, I um, forget what date that is, but uh, we're going to come together with inviting all of the people who've been involved in the, the, the challenge, the 30-Day Heart Challenge, but also other communities. So in, in addition to the people who are there at the event and, of course, the online or virtual community, but the Global Coherence Pulse community and a number of other groups around the, the world to all come together using the Global Coherence app at the same time. And so we'll do a, a really a neat experiment where we'll be looking at the GCP2 data to see if we pulse or can modulate the, the planetary consciousness field, adding more coherence, more love and compassion to the field. So I'm looking forward to that. It'll be a fun experiment. Um, yeah, you know, we couldn't be more that. excited to be guiding that. Um, so thank you for allowing us to do that. And if you're listening to this, you could be a part of something so special. You know, we're really going to be seeing if we can impact global consciousness. And uh, the, the one question I had for you is to anybody listening, if they want to be involved in that, there's an app that they should be downloading. So if you could just speak a little bit to that. app, Yeah, yeah so called the Global Coherence app. Yeah, and it's a, a free app. You can get it either from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, and it's it's a unique app. Um, all of the the heart math apps, of course, measure and, and feedback your level of heart coherence and allow you to see that in real time, so you can practice. Um, you know, be, really being able to maintain your coherence throughout the day and throughout life, really. But this app is is unique in that it's. Uh, in addition to showing you your own level of coherence in real time, it also connects the community so we can measure the collective coherence of the community and really look at how much coherent heart energy we're adding to the global field environment. And it's a key part of the the on the unfolding research, especially that we'll be doing more in the future of it. And this kind of event is really kind of a kickoff for this kind of research where we can actually look at the level of coherence that people, how many people are involved, because there's a really neat map so you can see where people are around the world who are there with you right now, adding love to the, the field environment. Uh, so we can measure that and track it. And so it's, um, but, you know, let me just say one more thing here about this. One of the new hypotheses in the, the new Global Consciousness Project 2.0, um, which has shown that in previously, the previous work in GCP1 has shown that the, the more people who are involved in an event, whether it's a meditation or a tra- tragedy type event, is directly related to the magnitude of the, the the effect you see in the, the field, the global consciousness field. But what uh, a new hypothesis here is that that it's not so much the number of people, but it's how coherent are we? And do we have a shared intention? And, we, um, and there's already supporting data for this, and this is why this is such a neat experiment we'll be doing, because we'll really be able to uh, hopefully practice beforehand so we can really get into that co- heart coherent state. And when, when you guys lead the meditation, we'll all be focused on the same thing at the same time. So I hope I'm making sense there. Yeah. yeah I actually so. would, considering that there could be a lot of people that are new with us or sometimes in general, it's just nice to get a little refresher. Can you just talk a little bit more for somebody who doesn't know anything about measuring coherence, what that means yeah. and how the actual technology works? Yeah, it's a great question because we use coherence in a lot of ways. And yeah. It's confusing if we don't kind of break it down. Because uh, there's I mean, a coherence within our personal systems or bodies. And that's what we're talking about here. And that's reflected in the rhythms of the heart. And uh, so there, there are actually over 500 independent research studies now where people have been uh, taught how to get into this coherent state. So with, uh, it's very clear that it's an optimal state that we can learn how to shift into. In fact, that simple technique I led us through at the beginning is a, a technique that shifts us in our physiology into that more coherent state. It has all kinds of benefits. And um, I think most people know we have a heart rhythm, right? And which is based on heart rate variability, the beat to beat change in our heart rate. So in a coherent state, the way that shows up and we can measure that is where the rhythm of the heart becomes like rolling hills, this beautiful sine wave pattern, about, about a 10 second rhythm. Okay? And that's reflecting this optimal state where the heart and brain are more in sync. Um, so and it's creating a lot of benefits in our body, you know, more hormonal balance, improved immunity, but especially the way the heart and brain are getting in sync, it uh, enhances our mental capacity. So uh, we can think better. We can be more uh, 
able to maintain our composure in the middle of the chaos that might be happening, these types of things. So it's a state that uh, we naturally go into when we're feeling good. You know, when we have those heartfelt feelings of appreciation or gratitude or kindness or compassion, we we are naturally in 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 that frequency, that that rhythm. So we also use coherence, though. Uh, So that's one way to find one of the be more specific, we would call that heart rhythm coherence or physiological coherence, these kind of terms. But we also use coherence to talk about the harmonious relationships within a family or a group or a team, right? Mm-hmm. And then, of course, global coherence, which is the theme of, of the event, um, the, the coherence between humanity and the earth and the, the rhythms of the earth itself. I hope I a- answered that. That's all. perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. We talk about so much and then we think, oh, okay, some people might not know the basics. Sure. No, of course. Yeah. Uh, just before I forget, I wanted to let anyone listening know that there's a bunch of links in the description where you can find information about heart coherence, about the event, and about the app. So anybody watching, mm-hmm. go there right now, download all those things before you forget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I would really encourage the um, anybody who thinks they might want to get involved in the experiment. I really hope a lot of people do. I'd really invite uh, everyone in to take to be in the the weeks, months, and weeks leading up to the the experiment on that Saturday. But use the app. It's free, right? I mean, and uh, it's uh, ideally if you have one of the, the sensors, uh, like these kind of things that you put on your ear and it talks to the app, you get really high quality heart rhythm or HRV recording. But you don't have to have one of those. The, the, one of the unique things about the Global Coherence app is, is you can actually use the camera on your phone as your sensor for the, for the pulse and the heart rhythm. Um, so it, it's accessible to everyone anywhere yeah. in the world at, at really no cost. But so uh, my invitation is to practice so you can really know what that state feels like. And you can go into those deeper states of heart coherence during the, uh, the experiment. In the event. Yeah, it seems like based off of everything you've said, it's perfect that we're doing a 30 day challenge leading up to this measurement. Oh, absolutely. It was it was really almost uh, magical or yeah. meant to be when we uh, yeah. realized the, the timing of, uh, of the, the challenge and uh, our event. Yeah. If you'll be joining us in that comment, comment below that you're, you're in on our meditation, because we really need as many people as possible to come join us. So please let us know if you'll be there with us. Yeah. So I would love to talk a little bit more about. So basically, we're going to be leading this meditation where we're going to be sending out love and compassion. And you spoke a little bit about it, but people might not really understand the science of what we're going to do. So I would love to hear more about gcp2 and even if you would like to talk about you know the the progress of when people started using random number generators and then how heart math joined and what exactly you're going to be doing to sure. measure yeah. coherence okay uh, let me just give a, if that's okay a little bit of background there yeah. sure. so we started the it, it's um can get really confusing because there's all these global projects, right? Yes. So there's the uh, Global Coherence Initiative, or GCI, which is the host of this this event. Right. Uh, it's the Global Coherence Initiative, which we started, I don't know, a bunch of years ago. And it, it's a science-based project to really help facilitate the shift in global consciousness. Uh, but, it has, but it has a very strong research component as well. So to do research, we need tools, right, to measurement tools. So we have a number of tools in our toolbox uh, under GCI. And one of them is that's what we call the Global Coherence Monitoring System. And these are, this is a global network of ultra-sensitive magnetometers that are measuring, literally measuring globally, the resonant frequencies, the vibrating rhythms in the Earth, the fields we all live in, the magnetic fields, those things we can measure. And we've published quite a few studies around that in recent years. Awesome stuff there showing how the rhythms in our body and our physiology are, are, in, are uh, in sync with or not uh, the rhythms of the Earth. I think we most intuitive, most of us intuitively know it's good to be in sync with the fields we live in. Mm. Um, that's one t- set of tools. Uh, then we also have the glo- um, another project where we're measuring the electrical activity of trees globally. So we have trees all around the world being hooked up. That's a- another project. Um, e- we could talk for a long time about each one of these. <laughs> then, the glo- then the Global Coherence app that we talked about is part of that. So we can measure the people as well. And then the newest set of tools in the toolbox is the Global Consciousness Project, right? So the um, original GCP, or Global Consciousness Project, was started by my my close friend, Roger Nelson, 
um, well, probably close to 27 years ago now, at Princeton when he was at Princeton University. And just to, to answer your question, Leah, he had he had done a lot of work at what's what was called the Pear Lab there at Princeton. They were looking to at a lot of different really cool studies. They did a lot of fun stuff actually back then to really look to to see if our uh, if, if our consciousness could interact with and affect and change the physical world. That was really a lot of their research focus. And they did a lot of neat things. But one of the things they were experimenting with was random number generators. And for people who aren't familiar with those, they sound complicated. And they, well, they actually are. To, to make one, it's truly a random number generator. But what they do is pretty simple. And I'll just invite you to think of them as electronic coin flippers. Right, because we know we flip a coin a hundred times or a thousand times. On average, it's going to come out fifty heads, fifty tails. Right. However, you might, and while you're flipping the coin, you try it. You know, I've actually done it a few times. You might get five or even eight, ten heads in a row or tails in a row. Right. So these sequences, repeating uh, flips. So what they were doing it back in, in the original um, research was trying to see if people could uh, consciously influence the output of these devices, make more heads or more tails, this type of thing. Okay, And they did lots and lots of studies and found out that then in general, yes, right, we, our consciousness was somehow interacting with these physical devices and changing their behavior. So that then led, uh, that all that research then led uh, Roger, Dr. Nelson to the idea, well, what if we, can we measure this globally uh, and use these devices to, as a probe, as a scientific instrument to see if there is an interconnectivity at a, at a global scale and what he th thought of as a global consciousness field. So he put these devices around the world and many years later and, and many, I won't go into all the formal research, it's very, very scientific and very rigorous, found out the statistics when, they, when he closed the, the formal project were over a trillion to one odds against chance that this is a real effect. And the effect being that when usually something in the, you know, in the media, you know, like after like 9-11 was a huge effect, you know, the terrorist attacks, uh, the death of Princess Diana and the funeral, where a lot of people are paying attention to something at the same time and feeling something. And that was uh, the, the most important part of it is there's an emotional response that it caused these devices, even though they're thousands of miles apart often, Right, all independent, you know, verified devices, random generators started flipping ones or instead of heads or tails, it's ones or zeros in the devices, but started flipping ones or zeros at the same time around the world. So it's the way I think of them now. I think it's an accurate way to think of them as a this globally distributed scientific instrument that's tuned in somehow to the global consciousness field. Um, so that was, you know, started you know, 20 some years ago and uh, technology has come a long way, right? So, so Roger in his retirement, his second retirement, where he's really retired now, <laughs> <laughs> approached us and me uh, a few years ago and asked if we would become the new home uh, for the project. Cause it, and I, to be honest, I resisted because I knew this was going to be a lot of work and <laughs> yeah, we had all the things we're doing and all on bandwidth and projects, but I and basically I had to follow my own heart. And because uh, it was just what what the project has shown is just too important to not uh, continue it. And but we decided um, we were going to take it on that we really, we should really look to see well let's just not do the same thing it's already been shown. But what are our new questions? So we have a, a team of scientists from around the world that are really interested in this this type of work. Really smart people. Um, so we looked at what have we learned from GCP one. And then what are, what are the questions we couldn't ask that are really important to ask now? What are the new questions? Where does this need to go next? And mm -hmm. what do we have to do to be able to ask those questions? Right? So that's what we did. And then that became the, the design blueprint for GCP2. Uh, so it's com been completely rebuilt and completely redesigned from the ground up. Everything about it is new uh, to be able to address these new scientific questions and, and increase the sensitivity of our ability to detect these Kind of waves, if you will, in the, the field of global consciousness is how I tend to think about it. And one of our newer research partners is actually doing some awesome research. That that's probably that that metaphor I'll say of you know like waves in a field of consciousness is probably right. Actually, that there, it is a wave-like um, structure. So uh, anyway, there's hints that that's probably the because we we love to use metaphors 
you know, to describe this, what's happening, you know, because if you think of the random number generators like rubber ducks or buoys floating on water, what's happening when, when there's network coherence, as we call it, they're starting to move up and down at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Like if you're, if you had waves on the water, right, they're moving up and down, or you've got chaotic seas and they're all choppy and things like that. That's kind of what's happening. So when we come together, um, like we just did a little while ago, but enough people and we're really adding those coherent heart energy to the field, that love, that compassion, it's creating ice waves, coherent waves in the field, right? Which is what the devices are, are detecting. I know that was a long winded. Uh, no, that's perfect. exactly what I yeah. wanted. Yeah. So I'd like to just take a step back to the very beginning uh, because we're partnering with HeartMath for our event and your event, and it's been amazing. So first off, thank you, everybody from the HeartMath team. We recently went out there and visited you all, and that was so, so <laughs> amazing. So I just wanted to ask for everybody who's new here, because we have a lot of new people here, who's HeartMath? What's HeartMath? That's not an easy question to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was good. I wanted to stump you. But you only have 30 seconds. <laughs> well, because we're, we're, we are involved in a lot of different things. But I mean, ultimately, HeartMath is a system of tools, techniques, and technologies that really simplify the process and make it a lot easier for people to learn how to get the heart and mind in sync and to access our, our deeper intuitive guidance, right, which really comes from our larger self you know, whatever you want to call it, your higher self or your soul or your spirit. But here we just call it your larger self. And uh, so a lot of science around how to do that and the benefits of doing that. But the real focus is, is making this really easy for, for anyone to learn how to do, whether you're in kindergarten or you're a corporate executive of a major company, it doesn't really matter and everything in between. So mm -hmm. that's, that's really our, our goal. And it's ultimately always been about helping increase the, the consciousness level of humanity. Mm. That, I think that's what we have to do. I know that's what we have to do if we're going uh, to move forward in, our, in the evolution of, the, of our consciousness, um, to rise above all the stuff we see happening in the world right now. Uh, finally learn how to get along with each other. And I, I, from my perspective, Kyle and Leah, that's only going to happen when we learn how to really access the intelligence of the heart, uh, which mm. can help, right, you know, this is what elevates consciousness to our next level. So start yeah. being kinder to each other. Yeah. Right? Start listening to each other. And yeah. And, and this is the kickoff, right? To our event. And so everyone listening kind of to just, you know, re reframe everything. It's like to, to get coherent, you're doing rhythmic breathing through the heart and then accessing elevated emotions. Anybody can do this and it has profound effects on your physiology, your entire life. So just wanna take a moment, if you know anybody in your life that could really use this, this is for anybody. We've taught firefighters, police, you know, people in recovery, all walks of life, children. We are, please invite everybody to come in and join us for this event because it will, it's changed my life. And I, I hope you guys, you know, come bring everyone you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Roland. I was just going to say it's interesting because the of all these yearly events that we've done, I don't want anybody to think that this is for experts because uh, usually well over half of the people attending, uh, mm -hmm. like the event we're doing in in, uh, in May, are new, completely new. Yeah, uh, never been to anything. First time they've even something just drew them. You know, they're I, probably their own intuitive guidance. I need to go to this. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to go. Uh, but usually over half the people are, are in that category. Uh, which is kind of a challenge. You know, we've kind of figured out how to do it, but because you've got over half of the participants that, what is heart coherence, right? What's this about, right? Uh, the real very basics. And then you've got, you know, another chunk that you know, maybe been to lots of events who are trainers, even these types of things. So finding that balance of how we bring in new, uh, new stuff for the people who are really familiar with it and also the basics for those that, that aren't. Uh, mm -hmm. So we've, I think we will have a great balance of that. I think this year, uh, especially at this year, we're getting better at that. So I don't want anybody to think you have to be a heart coherence expert or something. That's it's right. really, um, there'll be a whole afternoon sessions just for, for the newer people. Yeah, I think that's important to say. And I think it really does appeal to a lot of people because there is this scientific bend to things where you can measure. It doesn't seem 
you know, not that there isn't a component that could be kind of woo woo to you personally or very spiritual. It's also just very measurable and and, practical. Yeah. And really Mm -hmm. practical, just really helpful for basic life. Yeah. On on the research, it means you said that that the thing I hear most often, these kind of events after we present the research and I really try and do it, try and make complex stuff pretty simple for people and uh, do my best to do that. What I what I hear the most from people is basically thank you for doing science around something I already knew or believed to be true. Yeah. Right. Uh, like the energetic field environments, and you know, we feel the emotions of others. Some of the work we've actually done real science around, and a, a lot of times that people then say, you know, it really gives me the confidence, more deeper confidence with the science there behind what I believed or knew to be true, to really, you know, follow my my inner guidance there that kind yeah. of thing so yeah love hearing that oh good i was just gonna say i i was headed towards asking um you mentioned and i just think it's so interesting to people the other two projects that you're involved in you mentioned the thing about trees which mm. i've actually never heard of mm. um and then you talked about two different things i just wondered because i think it's so exciting to people like we said that there's this way that you can look at the scientific effects of things. Could you just talk a little bit about those two other projects? Um, yeah, so that would be the trees and the, and the, the magnetic monitoring. Yeah. Those would be the two you're talking about, I think, mm-hmm. Leah. Yeah, oh, well, the tree, so one of the hypotheses, large, we have a, a number of guiding high-level scientific hypotheses for the Global uh, Coherence Initiative that just kind of started all this. And well, I'll see if I can say this really simple, but we we know we all live within magnetic fields of the earth, okay? Uh, fields, it's actually fields within fields. And I'll just give you one one example of what why we have this global system monitoring these the magnetic rhythms. We have these ultra-sensitive magnetometers, you know, one here in, in California, up on a mountain here. I don't know if you, we went and saw it when you were here or not, but uh, no. it been raining. No. I think it was raining and we couldn't get up. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Lithuania, South Africa, New Zealand, uh, Northern Canada, places like this. So it's truly a global monitoring system. Now, so we all know that the geomagnetic field, right, with that North Pole, South Pole, right, we'll learn about this in school, thing our compass is tuned into. If, um, let me help create a picture here for people. If you remember back in science class when we dumped iron filings on the glass plate, you know, and you put your magnet under it, and that's fun. You move it around and try different magnets and different shapes and all that, right? Well, the, the thing to recall is those iron filings line up in parallel lines. So that real simple little experiment is also letting us visualize what are called magnetic field lines. Mm. Okay, so they're actual lines of force. Now, here's the thing, and I, I mean, I was my previous career, I was a communication engineer, I used to work for Motorola. Right. I didn't I didn't learn this till we got into this work, you know, and looking at the human um earth magnetic re- re- uh, interactions. But the, the the cool thing is, who would have thought? Um you can pluck magnetic field lines and they vibrate just like a guitar string. Right. So what and what's plucking the magnetic field lines or the strings of Earth is the solar wind. You know, Earth is turning the solar wind coming by at a million miles per hour, and they're vi- these fields are vibrating. And when we measure their frequency, well, let me say this, just like in a guitar or any stringed instrument, the length of the string and the tension on it determines its vibrational frequency, the note, mm. okay, its resonant frequency. But if it's a guitar, you know, it's C or E, the different, you know, we're tuning it to, but it's same, exactly the same thing. So the field lines of Earth are really long. So they've got a low, very low frequency below our ability to hear well, here's the wild thing. I think it just it blew me away when I see this. And nobody put the dots together. It's been known forever. But, and these are called field line resonances, by the way. It's a technical name for them. Field lines vibrating, field line resonances. Well, they're exactly the same as the human heart with them when we're in a coherent state. Mm-hmm. Right? And then there's other magnetic fields called human resonances. There's eight of those that overlap our brain waves and so on. So that's why we're measuring the magnetic environment. Because it's all, it, it, this, if this, if the fields we live in are vibrating the same frequency as our brains and earth, I'm sorry, brains and hearts, right? Then through resonance practices and principles, there's inf- information being communicated from the fields to us. That's very clear. There's hundreds of studies showing that, how it affects us. 
but we're also feeding the field, right? So what we're feeling, especially feeling in our emotions, but also thinking is also feeding information into the field. So I, I call it a global information field that we're all part of and all contributing to. Okay. So one of the second hypotheses there, we know we live in those fields, uh, is that these magnetic fields that I'm talking about connect all living systems mm -hmm. on earth, plants, trees, animals, us, right? Mm -hmm. So if that a way to test that hypothesis, if you will, is we have to look at, we're looking at us people, we're doing lots of studies measuring us in different ways, but trees is a great research participant. They stay put, right? Mm -hmm. They don't run off. And they really don't mind if we put a couple of electrodes in them. <laughs> yeah, so we've so we're looking globally, but we now have a, close to 100 trees all around the world. I mean, in almost every major continent and country now, where we're measuring the electrical activity of trees. And as it turns out, it, it's really surprising how dynamic the electrical activity of trees are, and the voltages, the, the amount of voltages they produce when you put electrodes in and measure them. It's in what's called millivolts. Um, that may not sound like a lot, but it's the same level as you measure the human heartbeat from, which right. is 100 times better than brain waves. So trees are amazing. They have circadian rhythms just like we do and um, very dynamic, um, complex uh, electrical activity. So a lot of, so that's a, the goal of that project, why we're doing it, is to be able to look at the, the magnetic data, the tree data, human data, right, uh, GCP2 data all together to really get this much deeper understanding and picture of how we are truly interconnected energetically with, with all of nature and, and uh, each other and the, the planet and so on. So that it's, it's a, those are different tools in the toolbox to really look at the, the deep fundamental interconnectivity that exists. I, I hope I answered your, your question. Yeah, that, so that. cool. Yeah, so as the lead researcher, um, pretty much of heart coherence in general, uh, our group is about to go into the heart for 30 days. What motivation can you give them on why this? I'll, I'll give you I'll, I'll hit one of the studies we did. It, it, it ties into what we were just talking about. Yeah. Uh, a little quick background here. We did a study a bunch of years ago now where we put recorders. I kind of actually have one laying over here that looks like this. Um, and these, these are high resolution heart rate variability recorders or heart rhythm. You know, you wear put it, they have electrodes and you stick them under your shirt, on your chest, and you wear them. They're very light. I mean, like like an ounce or less, and you kind of forget you've got them on. So we have uh, these are for amb ambulatory re recordings. In other words, you're going about your normal day, day and night. So we had a group of people that wore these continuously for 30 days. Hmm. Now, this particular group in this original study were all in, in California. However, some were in the southern part of the state. I mean, literally Palm Springs and L.A., some were here in central California where we are, some in northern part of the state. And it's kind of important to give this context. A lot of them didn't even know each other, right? So just going about our normal lives for 30 days while we're in these recorders. Now, the reason we did that, the, the original purpose was to, to, to examine how the rhythms in our nervous system, our autonomic nervous system and so on, were maybe being influenced by the geomagnetic and solar weather and fields and these kind of things. And they were a lot, it's all published now. But we had a big surprise that uh, when we time synchronized all the data from all these participants, the heart heart rate variability data, you know, just averaged it together, right? Which is a signal averaging approach. We expected to see it kind of a noisy flat line, nothing there. It's not what we found. What this showed was that the these these lower frequency rhythms in the heart rhythms of the, this group were synchronized. Wow. It's like, now, wait a minute. Nice. Why in the world? Let's go. Why in the world would the beat to beat changes in my heart rate have anything to do with somebody 500 miles away that I don't probably don't even know, let alone? And it's not like they're sitting in a room together, you know, for 30 days meditating or something. So, what we, uh, the true story is it took us about a week for the penny to drop. It's kind of embarrassing because it's one of our very own hypotheses that predicted this. <laughs> but to, uh, being honest with you, uh, what, what the only thing that really can explain that, I mean, from a grounded scientific perspective, was that the people were in sync with each other because they were synchronizing to something, to a field that they were all exposed to. 
Mm-hmm. Something that's statewide, the magnetic field lines we were just talking about earlier. So we looked at that, and and it's a. Uh, in fact, I'll show this at the event as a review. Uh, the graph of it, it, it's an amazing overlay when you look at the power of the resonant frequencies. It's an exact, almost an exact r- layover to the rhythms of the group of people. So, aha, right? We're we're in sync with each other because we're in sync with the rhythms in the earth, right? The resonant frequencies. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so that it was a relatively small group. And California, I mean, we're all pretty wacky out here, right? You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> anyway, we... We're fortunate enough to find a funder who funded a much larger version of that study. Uh, so we call that the International HRV Synchronization Study. Now, now that we had groups of 20 people in each in five different countries. So well over 100 people uh, who did it, who repeated this experiment. Now, we did something that once we knew that, you know, to really see it, is this happening globally, right? And... Uh, I won't go, there's a lot of details. A number of papers are coming out of this. But the one that, again, a big surprise happened. When we, this time, we organized it so that in the middle of the, the period, of the monitoring period, we had, we organized a time for all the participants and all the groups around the world to come together, kind of like we're going to be doing uh, in at the event, right? To do a heart lock-in for 15 minutes. Right, so wherever you were in the world, they, the the guy that we actually back then it was Skype. It had a had everybody connect in the groups and uh, led a meditation where they basically sent got into the heart focus, used the you know heart focused breathing, got coherent, but then sent love and appreciation to each other within all the groups. That was the the exercise for fifteen minutes. The results, well, there were a lot of level results. I mean, the people within the groups were more literally in sync with each other in each each of the groups, and that was true across all of them. But the amazing thing was we were able, we analyzed how in sync each person was with the rhythms of the earth over each day, over the 24 period, 24 hours of each day through the study, right? And then looked at the group level of that. And on that day of the the heart lock-in, when you look at the data, there's a big bar sticks up way above all the others that shows the degree of synchronization. So that's a long-winded way of saying just being in the heart coherent state for 15 minutes significantly increased our synchronization within ourselves and we're more coherent with others in the room but there was a carryover effect that increased our synchronization with the earth for the next 24 hours mm. yes so you might say well so what but well i kind of already hinted that there's more and more studies are now showing the I mean, not that's not just intuitively important to be in sync but why it's actually important to be in sync with the rhythms of the earth it's good for us and more energy. Um, a lot of things we could talk about. I'll probably go into some of that at the event. Some of those, some of the newer research on, around that. Yeah. So I, that's a long, long answer, but I hope it. I think, yeah, we invite everybody to come join us and yeah. connect with the the Earth because we now know how and, and each other, even more importantly, each, yeah. each other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have anything else to say, babe? No, this was so wonderful, and I think so motivating. And I hope you stay with us and the results people have at the end of 30 days is so amazing. We know some of why it is so amazing from talking to you. So thank you so much for bringing all the science and yeah, wisdom. Well, and, and thank you, uh, both of you, for the, even the idea of doing the challenge. But all I, I know you've got busy lives like everyone. <laughs> to, I mean, no, seriously, so you're you have a very deep motivation to really help others in the planet to, to um, you know, be living life like you're doing, but also take, do this on top of it to really bring these kind of interviews and really do putting the energy out to uh, create the, uh, the 30 day challenges. I think it's awesome. <laughs> and uh, anything I can ever do to support you and in, in, uh, your work and uh, let me know. Uh, Likewise. Thank you, Roland. And My thank pleasure. you to the whole heart math family. We love you all. And before we go, anybody again that's interested in joining our event, the, the uh, Global Coherence Love Unleashed event, which Lee and I will be a part of, will be a part of, uh, you can find the, the information in the comment section below. Description? Description, yeah. And then also, <laughs> she's usually the one that ha- handles all this. So, And then also the app, get the Global Coherence app, yeah. come, come join us in there. 
Um, yeah, and we are so looking forward to these next 30 days with you all. Bye, yes. everybody. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, take it. We love you. We love Sending you all. Love to everybody. Hi, I'm Jack Canfield. You probably know me as the co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul book series and a featured teacher in the book of the movie, The Secret. And I want to invite you to a very special and important event called Love Unleashed, which is being produced by the HeartMath Institute on May 16th and 19th, where I'll be presenting along with Deborah Rosman, Howard Martin, Greg Braden, and Lynn McTaggart, and a whole host of other people. And I'll be doing a presentation called Love is the Answer, where I'll be guiding you on how to overcome some of the obstacles to the full expression of love, such as fear, and the unconscious limiting beliefs that we have, and how to reconnect with the essence of your soul, which is love. And I look forward to seeing you there. 